All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today, back with another game review, uh, game twenty-three and the Flyers in crazy <laughs> comeback fashion. Um, they pick up a five-four win over the Buffalo Sabers in a shootout. Um, wow, uh, th this was a uh, eventful hockey game. So <laughs> you had a <laughs> terrible first period. And I'm laughing because it's just so weird how th this team just finds ways to win games. And, um, oh God, I mean, it it was so so weird because it was, it was obviously a must-win game coming into it. Um, the way Buffalo's been playing recently, losing a lot of games. You lost that last game versus Washington where you didn't play good. You wanted to see a better effort tonight. Um, it's kind of a trap game because of how bad that they've played, and it's also a must-win game for you. So it's like a must-win trap game situation. Um, and the Flyers, they come in with, with a different lineup, uh, 11 forwards, 7 defensemen. Um, so JVR, Kateri, Faraby, Lawton, Ace, Konechny, Lindblom, Drew, Voracek, um, and then Patrick and Albeku Bell um, for those 11 forwards. And then your 7D were Provy, Meyer, Sanheim, Braun, Hag, Ghost, and then Gustafson. Um, so it, there were people joking around saying Gustafson could have played fourth line right wing, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and obviously Carter Hart and Ned, who did get pulled in this one. Um, and then Buffalo, no Eichel. Um, so pretty similar lines um, for the Sabres overall. But, you know, for the most part, um, this I honestly thought was a pretty solid game for the Flyers. I mean, they kind of, as I said, you had a bad first period, um, really bad really really bad first period i mean it, it just felt like you you know you scored the early goal um you kind of got into it where you couldn't necessarily find a groove it felt like after the goal and i think there's been a lot of times when you've had a season like this um and and in, and in this season where you've had stretches of just, just real bad play after your score i think there's been a handful of times where the flyers have given up goals um you know, right after or under the two minute mark of that of that when they scored, there's been a lot of times where they're able to do that. So they kind of start off the game here, um, where they get an early goal from JVR, really nice shift from the Couturier line, great passing play, fire by JVR on the slot, it's one nothing. Um, Lawton ended up getting hurt off of that draw. Um, there honestly could have been a penalty call, there was nothing. So to start this game, you're already down a forward when you started the game with 11, so you're playing with 10 then. Um, that was great, but Lawton ended up did coming back at 6:28 here, um, and then you get the Sabers get a goal with you know four and a half minutes into the period, um, one one Reinhardt scores off Hart's shoulder, really nice shot, and you know Hart probably could have had that one, but Myers turned the puck over at the wall. So I look at the Hart situation like this: he hasn't been great. There's been a handful of times where you kind of think he could have had that one, but the defense has been bad. I mean bad they've had bad defense all year um th there's been turnovers missed guys in front you know you're just out man you're reaching looking at the puck puck watching whatever it is it's it's gone the it's gone the wrong way for the flyers and Hart, you know in the post game he looked sad um it, 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 and listen i think it's tough for the kid because he knows he wants to play better and you know he says he's kind of overthinking some things he just has to go out and play um i think Putting him on the bench is not going to do anything for him. I think he has to play. Um, he is your starting goaltender. I think the Flyers are obviously confident, and they know it's Carter Hart's net. But you can ride Elliott. But my thing is, is that you have a hint, you have so many games in X amount of days now with the way that the rest of this month plays out. It's like how long are you going to ride Moose? Um, my thing is, is I think that Hart has to play to get out of this. I mean, no, no athlete's going to have success in like a straight line. They're going to have ups and downs. And um, I know there's a lot of people that like to compare, like you know, carry prices numbers and things like that. But I think Hart's going to be fine. Um, I think there's no no need to to worry or panic. I've been saying it all year. There's no need to panic about this team. As far as team was good. Um, it's going to take some time. You know, there's still a lot of things. They've played one game healthy all year, out of 23, and they're 13, seven and three. Let's settle down here. But anyways, um, after that 1-1 goal, Flyers were getting some pucks deep. Couldn't really get much going. Struggling to move it out of the zone. Self-inflicted wounds. It's, it, it's been killer. It was the reason they lost the last two games uh, before tonight. Patrick had a really nice, great chance in front. Nice setup there. Uh, and then, again, it, it's just it's things like this where the Sabres, they get a goal. Um, Shane, he scores. Guy's just standing in still. They miss the guy in front. Sabres get another one later. Um, Reinhardt scores. And it's just a very easy entry in the zone for Hall, who looked very good tonight. Sends it in front, Reinhardt, bam, wide open, went off Konechny over Hart's glove, 
Um, high glove. He had two goals at one high glove. Seems like that might be the spot that you know they've gotten him this year. There's been a handful of times um, he got absolutely exposed in Lake Tahoe with the uh, you know high glove, short side, all glove side pretty much has been an issue. Uh, it seems like. I think again. I think there's been times where Hart's had some struggles, um, but like as I said, comes after the Tahoe game, gets a handful of days off with all the travel and things like that, and comes back and he has a 28 to shutout against Buffalo. So I don't see any issue um, with just letting him play this out because he can, and we know we will. But they have to play better defense in front of him. So I think it's a mix of both. I don't really think it's a, a look at Hart or it's a look at the D. I think there's been, I think it's everybody. I think collectively as a team, they have not played good de- team good team defense all year. They have at times because they've had games where they've played unbelievably well and they've you know shut teams out. They shut up Buffalo twice. Um, and they just played really good team deed where they don't let up many shots and many chances. That was one of the big things last year. They didn't give up many chances or shots, which is why, you know, the goaltenders look so good and everything. And yes, they made good saves, but they weren't faced with many high quality opportunities because the Flyers were that good at defense. So I, I think it's a mix of both, but, uh, end of the, end of the, uh, first period here, um, shots on goal were nine, eight flyers. It, it was just a bad period overall. You gave up three straight goals. Um, it, just really bad on defense. And that was kind of the thing, attention to detail. Um, start of the second period of Moose and Net. I don't necessarily think that was because of Hart. I think, again, it could have been both. Um, you know, maybe just to wake the team up a little bit is probably my guess. Uh, they start the period with a power play, couldn't get anything going. Uh, and they end up getting a goal. Uh, Hayes scores. Really nice play by Lawton to get into the zone. Makes a nice, really nice in-between-the-legs move. I love the play from Braun, though, to set this up because it's, it's that defense-to-offense kind of transition. Really nice play. This break up the Sabres at the Flyers' blue line. Sends it up the other way. Lawton makes a nice drag move. Sends it over to Hayes. He scores 3-2 there. Really good start to this period for the Flyers. Coots line, NAK chance. Um, looked like they were going to tie it right after. And then Buffalo comes right down and scored. Um, Drew line stuck in their own zone. They're hemmed. The most aggravating thing about this goal was not the fact that it goes off Goss's bear. It's the fact that four guys, I believe it was Jeru, Voracek, Ghost, and Limblom, all looked at Montour as he shot the puck. I mean, literally, you can go back and watch it. They're all just standing there like, huh. And then it just goes right in. Um, I, I, I mean, it goes off of off of uh, Ghost's stick there and just goes off the crossbar, maybe off a little piece of Elliot and goes in. So it's a tough one. But you again, there, there's no reason why Montour should have that much room to shoot. Um, Buffalo gets power play, Hayes cross check. This was literally right after the goal, and I'm like, oh my god, you just made it a one goal game, you just gave up a goal, and now you take a penalty. That's great. <laughs> That's just great. Um, the Flyers they ended up killing that off though. Really bad, really bad penalty. Uh, they killed it off, defending well, made some good reads, um, and they, and they ended up getting a power play here. Really nice shift from Voracek draws a high stick. Couldn't really get much going on the power play there. Then they get another one uh, a couple minutes later. Literally right after that one ended, they get one back. Uh, Moose had a great save uh, off Olsen, um a little bit after the power play, but the Flyers ended up getting a goal um, on that power play. A really nice pass from Jake over to G in front. Um, it was actually was after a power play, so it wasn't a power play goal. Um, it was a couple seconds after, but they still had all the same personnel on the ice and things like that. Really nice, really nice play from uh, Giroud to get the inside on Yoki Haru um, to you know kind of lift his stick and get that body positioning and, and score on the one timer. Um, that was just a great play, nice veteran move. Um, and the Flyers they ended the second period um, there. Uh, you know, they were down a goal. So you kind of went into it where it was like, it seemed like after the Flyers goal, um, the 4-3 goal, the Giroud goal, there were times where Buffalo kind of came right down and almost made it 5-3. So again, there's been a lot of times this year where we've seen that where like they kind of give up a goal or they get one back and it's like they can't keep the lead for that long or they it can't be tied or they can't be down one for that long, whatever. And it just seems like there's a lot of times where they just give up a goal in a short span. Buffalo had a lot of chances, but Moose made some good saves. Um, and, th- you know, they were lucky no harm was done. Um, shots on goal, 21-14 Flyers after the second, 12-6 Flyers in the period. Um, start the third, Provov chance on a wraparound. Voracek looked really good tonight. He was completely flying in the third period. Flyers were moving in the neutral zone. Uh, chance off the rush with Oscar Limblami sent a pass. That ended up going wide when right through. He was going for Drew, I think, who was crashing the net. Uh, Myers had a shot that trickled in the blue paint, um, and Voracek wasn't held up there, or at least maybe interfered with a little bit is what it kind of looked like to get that shot off. Probably would have scored on the on the uh, the empty net. Um, Flyers hit the post off a tip. I believe JVR tipped it. It was a shot from the point, tipped right off the bottom part of the, of the post and went out. 
God, that was so killer because it was like they it looked like it was gonna be they were just gonna kinda be that third period where they couldn't get that goal. Then they get a power play. Sandheim, really nice move um in front. Kind of a ticky tack one of those ones where it's like, yeah, I don't know if you could have called that. It definitely was a weak call, and the Flyers get a goal. Power play set up. Kudstrap pass back to Gossesbury. It's a bullet. Um, they look like they went for the double tip. I don't know if Connecting got a piece. They, I know they still gave it to Ghost, um, as on the NHL.com. Um, I believe it is still Gossesbear on here with the goal. Yes, it is. So Ghost still does have the goal, uh, which I don't think is changed because it was already a deflecting puck. But I, I personally thought that TK tipped it, but he did not. Um, so 4-4, the Flyers, they get one. Then Buffalo gets a power play here. Trip on Voracek. Um, I, I, I don't really understand that call. Um, it's a tied game, 4-4, with 2 minutes and 24 seconds left. And, like, yes, that is a penalty. Maybe I would assume it's called because it's a makeup for the Flyers one. Um, so I, I understand because it was a penalty. It was a trip. But I just don't know if that's the time to call that. Um, blocked by Provorov on the Olofsson shot. Flyers really aggressive on that penalty kill. They pretty much broke up everything. Very aggressive. They killed that one off. Really nice job to get to overtime. Coots had a breakaway. Goes for his normal, you know, usual shootout move where he tries to go real long with the stick and tuck it. Um, but Johansson's a big goaltender, so that was tough to get through. Um, really good defensive play um, on D there to kind of break up a Sabres rush. Then the Sabres, it felt like for like two and a half minutes, just kept holding the puck, holding the puck. They had one chance or two in front by Hall. Um, they had a nice play where they kind of got into the zone. Elliott made a nice save. Throwing one for the Flyers broken up where literally Faraby was on the ice for like two minutes and then took it up on a three-on-one with Hayes. Um, I believe in Goss Sparrow was the defenseman out there. Lawton and Connecting had a nice two-on-one. Really nice save by Johansson there. Um, and then no goals there in the overtime. Flyers' best chance was definitely by Couturier. Um, Flyers, you know what I love about this? Patrick. Patrick goes in the shootout. Um, so Coot scores. He goes in, does a normal... You know, cuts into the side, shoots it. Really nice play again because he, you know, went for that move in overtime. You're not going to do that again at the shootout. Um, so, again, that was good to see him. Just guys just kind of go in and shoot there. Um, Moose makes a nice save on Darlene. Patrick goes up. I absolutely love that. Definitely can give him confidence um, because, again, we've seen strides. I think that's a, that's a good move by A.V. You know, a guy that's been struggling to kind of get, do some things offensively. He's been great defensively. He's had his chances. He's looked a lot better. So why not put him in the shootout? What's he do? He goes upstairs, high glove, where Mama hides the cookies, and gives the Flyers a two on the fleet because there isn't as much pressure on Patrick either because the Flyers are already up. Um, so I think that made sense. Uh, middle stack goes up and misses, and the Flyers, they pick up a 5-4 win. Um, again, comeback win. You know, I think it's just, at times, um, they need to wake up a little bit defensively. Um, there's just been a handful of times that Team D just has not been good. Um, just, just need to play better in front of Carter Hart in general. I think that's been one of the reasons why everybody is probably so down on Hart is because, you know, he hasn't looked that good, but the Team D hasn't been good either. So, I think it's a mix of both. Um... My guess, if I'm Elaine Vigneault, I would go Carter Hart next game against Washington. I think that's the only way Hart gets better is if you put him in net. Um, you don't have as much time now to kind of sit here and say, oh, well, do we plan it for next game or give him, you know, they could say, you know what, Hart, take the day off, take a few days here and go into Saturday against Washington. That would probably make more sense. But um, my guess, I would say Hart Thursday if I'm Elaine Vigneault. I think just kind of let this one you know it's done now let's move on we picked up a win now let's go let's you know go into thursday at home so my guess would be hard on thursday we're gonna have to see what happens but i would not be surprised if flyers put moose in on thursday and hard back in saturday um because again it's a tough stretch with a lot of games a lot of days here you have a road trip next week to new, up in new york with the rangers and the islanders so you're gonna have to have some games where a goaltender can steal a couple for you because those are these are some big games coming up um, and as I said, the Flyers still have some, a few games in hand on some teams. So, again, they pick up a, a win tonight. Really good game. Must win. Uh, this was a, a nail-biter, felt like, for the most part. Um, but, again, let me know your guys' thoughts below. Remember, guys, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. And goodbye.